The legendary crafting system is coming live with the Steel Rain DLC, it's one of the major new features, and here's everything you need to know. Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Crafting all sorts of legendaries is a reality long due, but there is plenty of new rules to acknowledge if you wish to use the system wisely and properly. And that's because part of the system can be misleading or even deceiving, and we really don't want you to lose precious legendaries or waste cores for no good reason. Anyway, this system has been live for testing for over a month now on the public test server, and it will most likely carry on to the official servers as it is now. If you are not familiar with anything related to the legendary crafting system, don't you worry, I will go over everything from the straightforward points to the most complex ones. So with that being said, let's get started. We have a lot to cover today. Okay, so what's this legendary crafting system everyone has been talking about lately? Well, it's basically a set of new crafting options Bethesda enabled, which allows players to craft or upgrade most gear in-game. But there are exceptions as to be expected, in fact, this sort of crafting is no more, no less than a new type of modding. Seriously, legendary effects subtly went from being effects, as the name says, to become brand new type of mods. Not my words, it's Bethesda's, as shown in the footage. With Steel Rain, almost every gear piece has a new subcategory in the respective crafting benches for legendary mods. It's in here where you can turn your normal gear into legendary from 1 to 3 stars, or you can modify your existing legendaries by upgrading, downgrading, or even re-rolling the same legendary tier for brand new effects. I think it's obvious there's a lot you can do with this new legendary crafting, but hold on, things are not as simple as it initially looks like. The most misleading aspect of the legendary crafting system, in my view, is the fact that it gives you false hope about possibly keeping any legendary effects you have previously unlocked. I mean, it's a bit about common sense, at least I think so. If they went through all the trouble to make a new legendary system, then why not allow players to keep or save specific effects, and then just reroll the undesired ones? But nope, that's not what I did, my friends. So be very, very careful. Every time you craft or change the legendary mods, your item will fully reset. I repeat, fully reset. There's no way to save, lock or keep any legendary effects. Every time you craft, the system rolls brand new effects, no matter the tier. Let me give you an example. I had this two-shot handmade and I wanted to keep the primary mod, as to be expected, re-rolling only the second and third effects. However, this is not possible to do. As shown, whenever I re-roll the three stars mod, all my legendary effects re-roll. So there's no way to keep anything. Watch out, be very precisely about what you do with your legendaries. If you have a decent item, just keep it, because it's not possible to improve it in this regard. The so-called upgrade will reset your existing legendary effects. The upgrade Bethesda talks about only applies to the legendary tiers. You can indeed upgrade items up to 3 stars, but you cannot upgrade the effects per se. There is no player control over that part, sadly. So watch out, don't go on crafting mindlessly, because in this case, ignorance and wrong deductions can easily cost you dearly. Now that you are informed about the basic crafting or upgrading rules, let me tell you about what can you upgrade or turn into legendary. The general rule dictates that if you own a gear piece, you are able to make it legendary or upgrade it into the legendary tier you want. However, there are many exceptions which I will go over in the next point. For now, reassure yourself that basically any gear plans you have learned in the past are now able to become legendary through this new system, including power armor. That's right, you can craft normal gear items and then apply legendary mods as you please. The same can be done to gear you loot in the wasteland, acquire from other players or receive as a reward from activities. Even other legendaries can be modified, which means you don't need gear plants to turn gear into legendary. All you need is the item itself and voila! Anyway, this system will allow certain gear to become more competitive, like the Brotherhood 
Recon and Covert Armor sets, which were very, very difficult to get as legendary in the past, especially with the effects you wanted. At least now you don't have to rely on some insanely low drop rates from the Prevear or event rewards. Your chances will drastically improve by rolling legendary effects for one specific item. So expect more gear diversity to rise in the following months. Not everything can be turned into legendary though, as to be expected. Bethesda added a series of restrictions or exceptions, such as named weapons. You are not able to modify those, it would defy their existence anyway. So that one was something for sure. There were some bugs on the PTS regarding this one, where players could change the original effects for some named weapons, but Bethesda has been fixing them over time. If you happen to find this type of issue, I highly recommend you to report it. It's obviously a bug and not intended. Anyway, more exceptions. Backpacks are part of the armor tab, but they cannot become legendary, at least not yet. The same applies to under armors. These are obviously an active armor piece, but they cannot become legendary either. Your peep boy is also doomed to be an ordinary item forever and ever. Moreover, all cosmetics and headwear, including those with active effects, are not eligible to become legendary. Lastly, thrown items like grenades, mines, or even throwing weapons cannot become legendary as well for obvious reasons. As such, if you spot these exceptions as legendary, then be very, very wary because they were spawned by hackers. They are not legit. There are tons of those for sale on third-party websites, just to let you know. Alright, let's move on to the legendary cores, a new item introduced with Steel Rain and a key element of the legendary crafting system. You need this item to craft, upgrade or downgrade any gear item, together with the existing legendary modules sold by the Prevere. This started by being a currency, but it didn't take long until Bethesda changed it into a MISC item. You can find both legendary cores and modules under your MISC tab now, and if you're wondering why I have five thousand cords here well that's what they give us on the pts for testing purposes anyway without this new sort of currency item you cannot access the legendary crafting system as in you cannot craft anything moreover legendary cores are untradeable which means you cannot drop sell or trade them with anyone Lastly, these cores were first introduced as three different items from one to three stars, but Bethesda also changed it to one single item. Before the stars show before the name, like here, now there are no stars altogether. Also, you could only craft the desired legendary tier with the respective tier cores. It was a grinding feast and a source of frustration, so thanks goodness they changed it because this small change made such a huge difference for the better. There's now less confusion, less farming requirements and less shattered expectations from event rewards, which will make more sense with the next point. As I already mentioned, you always need legendary cores to use the new crafting system, but how many do you need exactly? Well, that's what I asked myself while working on this video, so I decided to test and compare some values. First of all, Bethesda's statement here on this does match with the in-game requirements. There are three categories, weapons, armor, and power armor. The legendary core requirements are the same for all three categories, however, the legendary modules are a bit different and they change from two of the categories. Weapons and power armor have the same exact crafting costs, both in terms of modules and cores, while simple armor requires less modules in general. So if we consider three stars crafting, you always need five legendary cores, but for the modules you need four for weapons and power armor, and one less for armor. Now these requirements are insanely high if you ask me, we will get back to this matter later, but at least they are pretty consistent and easy to memorize. Now, you may be wondering, how can you get legendary cores? My first assumption was, it must be sold at the Prevere. But guess what? I couldn't be more wrong, because these cores are the next grinding objective in 76. Yeah, you cannot buy them anywhere, the legit way at least, since cores are untradeable, and only drop from certain activities. First of all, forget about normal events. Since Bethesda already said this new item is a guaranteed drop from public events. 
only public. But the amount and drop rates are different and dependent on the success of the event. In other words, some events drop more cores than others by default, and some public events with tier objectives have a dynamic pool based on how well you perform. So far we had a very smooth and straightforward system, but it's here where things start to take a turn. It has been a complete mess. They changed the core drop system at least three times by now, I think. At first, we had a specific drop rate for public events. It was like a one-fit-all sort of rule. Then Bethesda adjusted the core amounts and drop rates depending on the event tiers and added a bunch of sub-rules and exceptions and I don't know what. But after the legendary cores became one item without stars, the entire drop system had to change again. So right now, this is what we have. The data miner Gilpo has already looked into the latest changes, which is supposed to go live in a few days. In general, you can get one to three cores per public event with uh, a respective 48% chance for one core, 32% chance for two cores and 20% for three cores. This applies to seasonal events as well. Moreover, tier three and four public events are more rewarding as to be expected. For example, a colossal problem and encrypted always rewards eight cores per completion, while Scorched Earth rewards only five for whatever reason. Meanwhile, events like Project Paradise can drop from one to eight cores, depending on how many creatures survive. Free range follows the same exact logic. But then we have rates that don't make any sense and are definitely not proportional with the other rates or even the event difficulty such as radiation rumble with a maximum of three cores per completion we also have campfire tales with two to six cores per event yeah it's weird don't ask me i have tested a bit on public events without bosses and i often receive two to three cores so the drop rates seem to be working decently apart from a few bugs also keep in mind that new cores do not show up on the new tab so you need to count them in your misc tab to make sure if you receive them or not anyway what Bethesda forgot to tell us is that public events aren't the only way to get legendary cores and no 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 daily ops can also drop them following the generic one to three cores peer operation which i mentioned earlier the thing is it's not working very well there are multiple reports claiming no cores were rewarded. I tested a couple of times and I can confirm this is true. I got no cores for finishing my operations, so let's hope they manage to solve this as soon as possible. It's finally time to talk about Legendary Power Armor. It's one of the core parts of the Legendary Crafting system. But how does it work exactly? Well, it's pretty easy. It's no different than crafting Legendary Armor or weapons. The interface and the options are the exact same. It's used for Power Armor. It's much easier and convenient if you have already learned the plans. So you can craft the normal pieces and then upgrade them. But can you turn everything into Legendary? Yes, I test a lot here and I was able to turn everything I could craft or own into legendary including the Strangler Heart set and the upcoming Hellcat set. I don't think there are any exceptions here. When it comes to the legendary effects or mods though I'm not certain if there are any new exclusive ones. I think not. I crafted three full sets and all the effects I got are active for normal armor. I also checked the Fallout wiki and the page is empty right now, which highly suggests there are no new exclusive effects. Anyway, keep in mind you are not able to turn power armor helmets into legendary because they are not considered as armor, even though they are because they are in the frame. I, I don't know, okay, let's not go there. Again, if you spot such item as legendary, keep in mind it's a hacked item. There are plenty of them around, sadly, so I'm afraid it might end up confusing people about what's legit or not. Talking about legendary power armor, there is an exception that you really need to know, a very harsh one actually. But as they decided to disable the unwielding effect for all power armor, a few weeks ago. So don't waste your time trying to roll such effect because it's not going to happen unless the item is spawned by hackers again. 
it's possible, but it's not legit. There's always that unpleasant part, I know, but I need to point it out so there are no doubts. Anyhow, Bethesda didn't exactly explain their decision, but it's implicit. I mean, this is by far the most popular and strongest armor effect in game, all these stacked attributes. It's just OP. Now, if you put that on top of the power armor defense bonus, next level OP, I would say. Now, I know many of you have been waiting to craft your wielding power armor sets, but that's not going to happen, sadly. At least not anytime soon, and definitely not with Steel Rain. One last thing, Bethesda already announced four other effects that are locked for power armor, such as Auto Revive, Acrobats, Improved Sneaking and Divers. Most of them because, well, such effects are already part of the power armor passives. But nonetheless, it's still good to know. Well, this point is complex and would require a lot of time to go through in great detail. I plan to make a video to talk just about this in the future, so hold on tight, it will come. Which includes brand new legendary effects as well. Anyway, the Fallout Wiki community has already updated the legendary effect pages for armor and weapons. And as you can see, there's a lot of entries with this purple icon which indicates the entry is either a new addition or received an update. If my math doesn't fail me, there are exactly 40 entries with this purple icon. So it clearly means Bethesda went all the way to rework the gear system in hopes to make it more balanced, diverse and competitive. Furthermore, they have been adding and removing a lot of effects from certain types of weapons. For example, the upcoming Pepper Shaker cannot roll the explosive effect and Stalker can no longer roll for melee weapons. The quad legendary effect is now available for most automatic weapons and Rapid can no longer apply to the Fat Man, M79 and Black Powder weapons. There are many other changes, so yes, the gear system is basically achieving a sort of 2.0 version with Steel Rain. Now it's time to return to the legendary crafting requirements, which by the way are insanely high. Bethesda did decrease it a bit over time during the testing period, but still the numbers are unrealistic. At least I think so, and I'm about to explain why. It's not so much about the cores, because those can be farmed to no end, all you need is time, and or some luck to find public events and that's it. The problem resides with the legendary modules. How comes? Well, have you seen the requirements per legendary craft? You need five modules per three stars crafting. Now, if you consider that each module costs 50 script at the Prevere, that means you need 250 script per craft. Yeah, pretty high, isn't it? Now, I know Bethesda is increasing the currency cap and daily limits. Script, for instance, is going up from 150 to 300 per day, but still, 300 is enough to purchase enough modules for one single 3 stars crafting, guys. One, just one. You can get a maximum of six modules per day. I mean, are they for real? Who made this? Who thought this was a great idea? One three stars craft is all we get. But it gets even worse if you look further in time. Per week, you can unlock a maximum of 42 modules per character. Considering you need three to four modules per three stars crafting, that equals 10 to 14 crafts per week. I can't think of any possible scenario where this makes sense. If you are curious about monthly figures, well, you can get about 168 modules per month if you don't skip any day, which equals a maximum of 56 crafts of 3 stars every month. Outstanding! About 50 crafts per 30 days. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm sorry to break it to you, but uh, I doubt this feature will be very useful or meaningful if they don't change the requirements. At least not when it comes to rolling the effects you want. You can get legendary items, you know, random ones. You can make everything legendary, but the ones you want, uh, that's going to be very, very difficult to get. We are almost done with this overview, but before I wrap things up, I highly advise you to always craft legendary gear directly 
if you have the option to, such as Secret Service Armor or Wastelanders weapons, such as the Gauss pistol and minigun. Why though? Well, because it's much cheaper and easier to craft. Therefore, your chances to get the effects you want are much, much higher. Let me exemplify. For example, to directly craft a 3 stars legendary Gauss minigun, you need scrap and two legendary modules, where when you upgrade it, it would require four modules and five cores. The difference is much larger with armor. For secret service, you only need one module per crafting, where upgrades cost three modules and five cores per craft. Sadly, the option to directly craft gear as legendary are scarce, but it's surely a point to remember. Always craft directly if you can. The last point I want to share is about how legendary core farming can and will most likely become a hot mess, because that has been my exact experience while testing it. Besides all the chaotic changes and reworks, things are still not working as intended. Far from it. Public events don't always reward your cores as it should be. I completed several events without receiving a single legendary core. Primal Cuts, for example, doesn't seem to reward you with any, despite being a public event. I suspect this might be an exception, but we have no official statements yet. I also completed Tea Time and received no course. I was even manually counting them to make sure uh, I was receiving them or not. When it comes to daily ops, it's even worse, guys. Several players have reported that daily ops are broken and do not reward legendary cores at all. I did two runs so far and I received no cores, so two runs, zero cores, basically. And I can confirm this bug is live and it's going to carry on to uh, the official servers because we are a few days from the DLC release and I don't think they will fix any major issues. So be aware, it's possible to get them. There's a few screenshots where players show they did get cores, but in general, you will not get any from daily operations as things are right now. Well, that's all the information I could gather about the legendary crafting system. I think it's as complete as you can get. In my view, this system surely has pros and cons. It's not a bad system, not at all. It brings way more accessibility to legendary gear for all 76 players, new, old, veterans, it doesn't matter. Now everyone has a great chance to access the gear they want as legendary, regardless of their level. It also includes a very simple and user-friendly interface, which is very easy to use. And it promotes a more diverse gear system with more legendary effects and by allowing players to use items that before were very difficult to get as legendaries. But the negative sides push the skill aside quite a lot, I think. I mean, first of all, we have these unrealistic crafting costs that benefits no one. I mean, one three stars craft per day. <sighs> How can a good system flourish if it can hardly be used? This system is also promoting core farming to no end. It's the new grinding purpose in 76, that's for sure. Let's not even go about how buggy and inconsistent the core farming is right now. Lastly, I find the system a bit discriminative, with so many effects being restricted from certain gear. It's like more and more effects are there, but definitely not for all gear. It's like we need an encyclopedia to know what can or cannot roll for X item at this point. It shouldn't be that way. In the end, I think the system is decent, it has a lot of potential, but it still needs a lot of work and adjustments to become the system 76 players want and need. Anyway, that's going to be everything for now. I hope you guys learned plenty of new things. I surely did while testing and putting all of this together. Well, my name is Marta Branco. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss anything and to help me out too, of course. And as usual, a huge thanks to all my lovely supporters. You guys are the best. It's time for me to go now. I will see you very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.